uh, we will go ahead and get started. So this is going to be a live presentation. Our presenters can see us right now. After their presentation, we will have a Q&A. Um, so you guys can, I'll hand it over to you and we should be good. Sweet. Cool. Can you all hear us? Perfect. All righty. Excellent. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Davide. I'm a production engineer at Facebook. Well, now Meta, I guess. And I'm Neil Gampa. I'm a senior DevOps engineer at Datto Inc. And for the next 20 minutes, we'll be talking a little bit about what's going on with CentOS Stream and how we're building the future with it. Uh, the agenda for today, we'll start with an introduction of what CentOS Stream is and how it's built. We'll then talk specifically about the work we've been doing within the Hyperscale SIG. And we'll close with a few words on how you two can get involved. And so I'll start with talking about CentOS Stream. So, uh, Davida. So, CentOS Stream uh, is a new portion in the Red Hat ecosystem that makes it so that people can actually see how the enterprise Linux platform is developed. So, you see from the very beginning, there's a lot of open source projects that are working in there. And then those projects are then pulled into the Fedora project to create the Fedora Linux distribution. And, you know, a roughly three-year cadence that is then branched to create a CentOS stream uh, release. And that CentOS stream uh, feeds into the creation of a Red Hat Enterprise Linux major release that you will then use in your uh, production workloads. Uh, next slide. So let's do a quick recap of how things have worked in the past. So with CentOS Linux 7, um, it started it life as Fedora Linux 19. And then Fedora Linux 19 gets branched into a staging distribution. Um, basically, rel, some people would call it rel rawhide, rel devel, whatever you want to call it. And this is where they start doing the work to cut down the content of Fedora Linux to something that Red Hat wants to support. And then they start pulling in things from the future because, you know, like, for example, some cherry pick from Fedora Linux 20 and Fedora Linux 21. And that eventually feeds into becoming uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.0. And then, of course, a few months later, that is then rebuilt as CentOS Linux 7.0. And then going forward, that is brand that is maintained and branched forward for every successive point release of 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, at infinitum, rinse and repeat. Next slide. With CentOS 8, um, this is a little bit different. So we start... We still start life in Fedora Linux. We start with Fedora Linux 28, and that is then branched to create um, CentOS Stream 8, which then is where all the development actually happens up front. And it's important to note that something that's different from this slide from before, there are now more squares that are orange. The orange squares uh, here are the parts where you can contribute, where you can be involved, you can make fixes, you can make features, you can do development in here. Um, the blue squares are the part that are the no touchy zones. Those are the parts that Red Hat engineers work on and you don't get to really mess with them. Um, the CentOS Linux is weird. Basically because they, they want to be rel, they don't, it's still a no touchy zone, even though whatever. Um, but with, with CentOS 8 platform, you have CentOS Stream 8, which is a continuously um, publicly available stream, if you will of what is, what was, what is, and what will be Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. And so in there, you can take that, you can use it. And if you find a problem or, you know, there's an enhancement that'd be worth having included in there, you can contribute that back into the project and that gets incorporated into CentOS Stream 8, which then feeds into Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. Uh, and so it starts with 8.0, which then becomes CentOS Linux 8.0, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, and like today, we're at CentOS Linux 8.5, uh, which came from Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5, which actually came from CentOS Stream 8 five months ago. So next slide. With CentOS Stream 9, we're changing the, the whole thing again, uh, sort of. So... We still start life as a Fedora Linux release, Fedora Linux 34. But we also have this midpoint between CentOS Stream and Fedora Linux called Fedora ELN or uh, El Nino or Enterprise Linux Next or whatever you want to call this. Uh, 
this is essentially an automated rebuild of Fedora Linux with a Red Hat Enterprise Linux build configuration. So setting up all the tunables, the presets, rel patches, build conditionals, featured activations, um, kernel flags, ABI settings, the whole works. Like all the things that you actually expect from a Red Hat Enterprise Linux release, they're being continually validated in Fedora ELN. Now that ELN stuff then feeds into CentOS Stream 9. And that CentOS Stream 9 is open to development. People can come in and do it, just like I mentioned before with CentOS Stream 8. And that development feeds into Red Hat Enterprise Linux like before. And then, you know, Red Hat Linux 9.0, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9.1, so on, so on, so on. Right now, we're at uh, CentOS Stream 9 is past the point that the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9 beta was. So 9 beta was branched from CentOS Stream 9 in August. And so from that point onward, from September onward, CentOS Stream 9 is targeting for GA. And then, you know, at some point when they're ready to branch that for 9.0, then CentOS Stream 9 just continues on to be 9.1 and so on. And that's, and you can see with CentOS Stream 9, you have so many more squares of contribution that you can get involved in the process. Uh, next slide. So to kind of like give you a better description of like what these what these phases of the part that I'm talking about are, so you start with Fedora Linux and the Fedora project. So that influences CentOS stream major releases. You can file and fix bugs, maintain packages, but more importantly, you can drive, you know, in all ca in capital C changes, which is the process that Fedora officially has for making um, new development and new capabilities available in the premier Linux platform that is Fedora Linux. Um, between Davida and I, we've done several over the years, and the notable ones with Fedora Linux 33, ButterFS by default, Fedora Linux 34, Z standard compression, Fedora Linux, uh, as well as Systemd Umdi, Fedora Linux 35, ButterFS by default for Fedora Cloud, and rolling forward into Fedora Linux 36, we're looking at FS Verity enablement, as well as copy on write for DNF RPM to make it super fast for uh, RPM transactions and things like that, leveraging features of the ButterFS file system. Next slide. So Fedora Apple or Extra Packages for Enterprise Linux is a sub-project of the Fedora project. This is additional packages for RHEL and CentOS based on Fedora. So essentially it is backports from Fedora to the Enterprise Linux platform. Um, Notably, uh, recently we uh, created an Apple Packager SIG, which is a place where people can come and help to um, streamline the process to add packages to Apple, tooling, collective maintenance, um, so that the burden isn't on just one or two people. It is you know, spread and supported by a larger community of folks who care about the enterprise Linux ecosystem within the Fedora project. Next. And Fedora ELN is, as I mentioned earlier, is a rebuild, a continuous rebuild of Fedora, but more specifically, it continually rebuilds Fedora Rawhide, which is the rolling development tree of Fedora Linux. Um, and it's built with CentOS and RHEL macros and toolchain. And the idea is that Fedora ELN is continually validating what the next enterprise Linux release is going to be. So after, um, after CentOS Stream 9 was branched from Fedora Linux 34 slash ELN, ELN kept on rolling forward and like, Pretty much the next day, um, ELN was pretending to be RHEL 10 and developing that. And so that was moving forward. And the ELN SIG does the work to make ELN easier to consume, covering packages, supporting things like making it possible to bootstrap things like Apple easier and quicker with things like upcoming ELN extras, which will essentially be like this. And the continuous testing and stuff to find and fix issues before they get to CentOS Stream. So we have stabilization happening at every level, from the beginning at Rawhide to the very end at the point release. Uh, next slide. So CentOS Stream 8, uh, which is the current major version, uh, well, a current major version, I should rephrase, of, of CentOS. And this is basically tracking the next minor release of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, you can file and fix bugs against the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 product in the Red Hat Bugzilla, which is important because 
it means that the RHEL developers are paying attention to CentOS Stream. So if you think that CentOS Stream doesn't matter, you're wrong because when you file bugs there, and even if you provide patches in there as you in your bug reports, the RHEL developers are paying attention and they're actually giving you feedback or going to incorporate it and do things with that. I've done this so many times, so has Davida. It's it's a thing. It, it really does happen. Um, you can follow the development on git.centos.org, Pagur instance that has, uh, which is a, a Pagur being a Git forge. It's a Git forge instance that has all of the sources for all of the packages and all the things that are happening in CentOS. Um, you can also drive change through special interest groups that layer on top of CentOS stream. Um, Davida is actually going to talk to you in a little bit about one such instance of that, but like, it's a super exciting way to be able to prove out interesting concepts and capabilities and to support your needs within the enterprise Linux ecosystem, uh, in a way that everyone can come in and help and make it better. Next slide. So CentOS stream nine, uh, I remember where I interrupted myself and said, a current release. So CentOS stream nine is effectively out. You you can go ahead and, and go ham on it. Um, like with CentOS Stream 8, you can file and fix bugs and follow development. Now, unlike CentOS Stream 8, CentOS Stream 9 is on gitlab.com. At gitlab.com slash Red Hat, one word, slash CentOS Stream with a hyphen in the middle. Um, you can also check out the build system instance to kind of see what's going on at kojihub.stream.centos.org. Um, there's also uh, what are called Composes, which are basically like every day where it, it goes through the whole process of effectively producing their distribution. And so you got your ISOs, you got your repos, you got your containers, you got your disk images for VMs, all the stuff. And that's at composes.stream.centos.org slash production. And also check out slash development for the stuff that hasn't been validated yet and slash test for the stuff that's passed all the rail tests but hasn't validated completely against the CentOS ones. Um, it's also now available on the Mirror Network. So your lovely favorite local mirror, uh, or if you are one of those said favorite lovely local mirrors, you'll be available on mirror.stream.centos.org slash 9-stream. Next. All right. So this is Davida's turn. Now let's talk a little bit about the work that we're doing within the Hyperscale SIG, which is one of the special interest groups in CentOS that Neil mentioned before. The idea behind Hyperscale is to have a place that various companies and engineers can use to do the kind of development work that tended to be done behind closed doors before. Everybody that's deploying CentOS at scale tends to roughly do the same things. They'll end up maybe backporting some packages that they need a further version on, or they'll end up patching things, they'll end up submitting bugs upstream. The idea is to get all of this work out in the open in a place that multiple companies can collaborate on so that we don't all end up reinventing the wheel. This is explicitly targeting CentOS stream uh, because CentOS stream is what's enabling a lot of this work being possible. Um, it is primarily targeting large deployments. Uh, I work at Facebook, well, Meta, uh, Neil works at Datto, uh, but there's nothing saying this has to run on a large deployment. You could use this anywhere. Uh, and it is open to anybody that works in the space. Uh, we have uh, 10, 15 members, I forgot. We, we had more people than we had when we started, which is nice. We more than doubled the size of the working group. Um, and we have public meetings on IRC that you are welcome to join. We also have a channel where most people hang out, at least during US daytime hours. So let's look a little bit at some of the things we're doing here. Uh, the main thing that the SIG provides is faster moving package backwards. And the idea is, as I mentioned before, if there are some packages in the distribution that you need a more recent version of, instead of having to make it an in-house version, you can leverage a version that has been deployed and tested in production environments already. And if you need changes to it, you can also contribute these changes. Uh, the idea is to have these packages be dropping replacement for these two packages. So they should just work as they are. They should add new features but they shouldn't make changes that make the distribution incompatible. And when they do, it should be well documented. This is something that's available right now. And if you have a CentOS system, you can just DNF install CentOS really hyperscale. And you'll get these packages. Uh, you can see the full list in that Koji tag. Um, I'm not going to read through the list, but it is a generally a mix of small utilities and plumbing packages and things that make the developer experience more pleasant. And it tends to be things that we, we personally care about. So if there is a package that you care about in here that would be a good fit, you could join the SIG and collaborate with us if you wanted to get them more. Um, a good example here is systemd. So over the years, uh, Facebook had maintained uh, a systemd backport uh, on GitHub because uh, we, we've always ran systemd, the systemd master version effectively, the latest systemd stable release instead of the version that was packaged in CentOS proper. However, having this in GitHub made it very difficult for people to consume because there wasn't already available package. 
All of this development is now done within the SIG. So we have a repository that you can find on Pegior that tracks the latest systemd release. The packaging is maintained on, on windowscentos.org alongside the official packaging. We also have a CI CD pipeline that every day rebuilds systemd from Gitmaster and alerts us of any potential issues, which makes release updates a lot easier. Uh, and this is the same version that we are running in production now uh, that has been well tested and everything. Uh, another example of package is Levert, uh, which is something that Neil runs at Dado in production, and it's maintained the same way. We are tracking the latest upstream stable release. It is packaged alongside the official package on the CentOS, and it's going to be kept up to date throughout the lifetime of the distribution. Um, something else I wanted to mention that we've done recently in this space was backporting the latest LLVM 12 stack. Uh, the reason I mentioned this is because I think this was a great example of collaboration in that we had a need to get LLVM 12 in the distribution and we still at LLVM 11. We worked with our L maintainer on that bug, offering the bills that we had till the time. The maintainer helped us actually troubleshoot a number of issues that we found. This ended up being an issue in LLVM proper that we helped review and validate. And in the end, LLVM 12 was landed in, Cent in the Relic 5 and in CentOS 8.5 proper. So we were able to sunset our backboard. And this ended up benefiting everybody because we were able to have availability of LLVM 12 sooner. We were able to improve the development process for our stream. And then everybody else got a more stable LLVM 12 in Relic and CentOS. Um, other things we do in the SIG, for some packages, we might carry packages with configuration variations. Um, so for example, IP tables in CentOS 8, only ships with the NF tables backend. And in, in a hyperscale, we build a modified version of it that also enables the legacy backend, because this is something that we, we had a need ourselves, but we figured it would also be useful in general. Um, finally, the, the last thing we have that I think is really interesting is that this also provides a platform to, for testing large scale, potentially large scale changes to the distribution in a way that is safe, but that also provides useful feedback. Uh, so Neil mentioned before that we're working on this change in Fedora for DNF and RPM copy of write. And this effectively requires rebuilding the entirety of the packaging stack. It is probably not something you want to deploy as is on a production system without testing first. Um, but it's very useful to have it deployed on production systems running CentOS to be able to validate it. So what we're doing in hyperscale is that we provide this set of packages in a separate repo called the experimental repo that you can install via separate release package. So if you want to test these packages and deploy them, you can also do that and provide feedback. Uh, there's lots of work in progress that's happening as well. We are working on producing a kernel spin. Uh, the, the kernel in CentOS is the same kernel in RHEL and tends to lag quite a bit compared to what's in Linux history. So we are working on having a more up-to-date kernel, especially to allow feature enablement around things like DPF, uh, C2, and especially ButterFS. A lot, a lot of folks working within hyperscale have interest in ButterFS, and a lot of this work happens to be around ButterFS enablement. And Neil, in particular, has done a lot of work adding support to the installer, doing user space enablement for ButterFS, starting experimenting with transactional updates. We also now produce a spin of CentOS proper called Hyperscale Workstation that gives you a live DVD with ButterFS on it already and our kernel and our packages. Uh, we also produce container images uh, that are on Quay.io that you can fetch. Uh, and we are looking at producing cloud images that we haven't quite started yet. Uh, in general, you can look on Pager for any of the work in progress that's happening. Uh, you can file issues there if there's stuff that you think is interesting or would benefit from work here. Um, or you can just talk to us on any of the venues I mentioned before. Uh, now, Neil, we'll close with a few words on how you two can get involved. Yeah. So, like, the easiest one is to read and contribute to the blog if you find something cool and you're working with it in, in hyperscale or any special interest group. You know, you can help broadcast it to the world on blog.centos.org. We always love seeing, you know, more advocacy for all the stuff that's going on in the CentOS project, and that's a great way to do it. You can join the CentOS development mailing list, at cent, uh, which is centos-devel at centos.org. That's where all the folks in the various SIGs, as well as the core um, CentOS folks, um, talk, and you can give feedback and see how things are going, keep track and do things like that. Um, we also have many community meetings, uh, IRC or video meetings, depending on the SIG and what they're doing and what their preferences are. But all that is tracked on centos.org slash community slash calendar. Um, you can join a SIG, like for example, the hyperscale SIG. We we love having people come in and, and do cool stuff. There's many others, like there's a cloud, uh, there's a, um, a cloud SIG, an OpenStack SIG, a, um, uh, a uh, 
storage right. SIG. There's there's quite a few out there. There are so many. I can't remember them all. Um, but you can, of course, report and fix bugs at bugzillaredhat.com, like, like I mentioned earlier. Maintain packages in Apple. Um, all the SIGs depend on Apple in some form or fashion. So, you know, maximal impact. If you bring if you bring a new interesting package backported from Fedora into, into enterprise Linux distributions through Apple, everyone super benefits from that. And contributing to Fedora helps make the next generation of the enterprise Linux platform even better. So, like, you may not think that Fedora is, you know, all that interesting, but, like, a lot of exciting stuff happens there, and it shapes the future of the enterprise Linux platform that all of you come to love and use. Next. And I think that's all we have. Yeah. Uh, do we have time for any questions? 